back again with a new series of videos about ReactJS. In this course, we'll learn everything we need from A to Z to master this technology. In this first video, we're going to talk about what is ReactJS, why it's the technology number one on the market right now that you should learn, and what's so special about it. Then we're going to go straight forward into coding. We're going to start by setting up the environment, installing all the tools you need so we can develop our first ReactJS application or website. So let's come on. React is more of a library than a framework. A library is an extra building block on the top of the language, JavaScript or TypeScript. With React, you have the choice between JavaScript or TypeScript. Both are kind of the same. TypeScript is nothing but a superset of JavaScript, which is strongly typed and object-oriented. React is super fast. It's a performance-oriented solution, and that's due to its virtual DOM mechanism. So first, let's clarify what's a DOM, what's a virtual DOM, and what's the difference between them. DOM or document object model is a data representation of the object that defines the structure and the content of a document on the web. Virtual DOM is a lightweight representation of the real DOM kept in memory. Unlike the real DOM, this virtual DOM identifies the minimal changes and updates just that. And this increases performances by making a website super fast compared to other frameworks or a pure website developed on JavaScript where the whole DOM is rendered for every tiny change. React architecture is based on component. A component is a small reusable block of our application that can hold other child components as they can be included in a part component. Components are meant to be small, reusable, independent, and always return HTML code. To find out more, let's take for example the Airbnb website, which is developed with React. So components are everywhere. The search bar, the card, the header, they are everywhere. So for example, the search bar is nested in another component, the header. And we have the card that are usable on the middle of the screen. Every card displays the image and the info about an island. So enough talking about React and let's jump into coding our first application. But first thing first, let's install the environment. We need to download Node.js. I'm going to choose Mac OS here because I'm on Mac. Then we're gonna just go straight forward and install our package. Okay, so now let's open a new terminal and execute this command. npx create react app, bookshelf, double dash, template equals TypeScript. It's super easy and fast. It's a one command to help us create and initialize a basic React app. So let's now see the bookshelf to access the generate application root folder. And then we're gonna execute npm star to start and run the React application on a server hosted on our localhost using the port 3000 by default. A new page is launched on our browser showing us that the React app was installed and running successfully. I'm executing this command to open up the application folder on Visual Studio Card, but you can choose your preferred ID. Let's look at the project default structure. As you can see, we have three folders and some files. The folders are node models, public, and sources. The tsconfig file is generated because we choose a ts as a language for our React app, and it's used to specify rules and options for using TypeScript. Then we have package.json that holds information like the project name, its version, and the needed npm dependencies. Their packages were downloaded and installed into the node module folder when we executed the npx create react app command. And then we have the public folder that contains the index.html file, which represents the entry point of our application. React will mount the application by default on the div with the id root that we see here in the body part of this file. To understand how this is done, we're going to go check the index.tsx file. As you can see here, we are using the JavaScript function document.getElementById to get the div with the id root that we saw just before in the index.html file. React is storing this div into a constant called root that he will use after to render the main or the root app component. Let's summarize. Within the public folder, we have index.html, which is the only HTML file rendered on the browser. Index.tsx in the source folder is an intermediate file which is in charge of rendering our React components into the previous index.html. Every React app is organized following a tree structure, with app as a parent component holding child components. Let's find out what we have inside our app component file. A mixture of HTML and TypeScript or JavaScript code. At first glance, this may look weird or bizarre, but once you get the gist of it, this syntax will make more sense. The HTML div you see inside the return function represents our default React app page. Now let's remove everything to keep a simple div with the title of our application, Bookshelf. Let's duplicate our Bookshelf div so we can have two of them. 
Red is everywhere, which means that there is something wrong with our code. There is a rule you got to follow when creating a component with React. You should always return only one div. So we must wrap all our div in a global div or an empty tag as I'm doing here. Let's now add some HTML code to have some meaningful content. For that, let's replace the bookshelf text within the two divs with three labels, a title, an author, and a summary for our books. The app component is now holding two divs, the first with information about Le Petit Prince book and the second for L'Etranger. Both are rendered, as you can see, on our browser on the right of the screen. Let's talk about dynamic placeholders. It's a mechanism that we can use to render TypeScript or JavaScript code within our HTML. This book one title constant that I'm adding here will hold the title of our first book, Le Petit Prince. In order to output my constant value inside the HTML label, we're gonna use dynamic placeholders. The constant is to be placed inside an opening and closing brackets. React will then evaluate the TypeScript code inside and render it. Same as for our first constant, we're gonna use dynamic placeholders to replace every label hard-coded text in our HTML with a constant. As a result, we are having two of these with three dynamic placeholders, the title, the author, and the summary. Let's enhance our code by defining a book interface, so we can create book objects with a title, an author, and a summary. I am initializing here an object that we'll call book1, so I will be able to access its field within the placeholders instead of the previous deleted constants. Let's just do the same thing with the second book. We're gonna create a new object and let's call it book2 and then we're gonna remove all the constants in our code. As a result here, we are having two objects of type book with three fields, title, author, and summary. And then we are using dynamic plus holders so we can access those fields within the code of our component. Let's make our code more organized. We're gonna create a new file that we're gonna call type.ts in which we're gonna copy past our book interface. Don't forget to add export so we can export our interface out of this file. And then back to our app.tsx file, we need to import it back so we can use it again. We said before that React architecture is based on components. Now it's the time to implement our first nested component so we can use it to render the book information. Within the src directory, we're gonna create a new folder, let's call it component, that we hold a new file named bookcard.tsx. We're gonna here use the shortcut RAFCE. It's from the React Snippets extension that you can add to your Visual Studio code. Then hitting enter to add the React Basic Arrow component function boilerplate code. Let's now move the first book dev from the app component to our newly created book card component. The book one is unrecognized, which is normal because it's still declared within the app component. So let's just move this object into our book card component. The book interface is missing as well. So let's add the import line. Saving all those changes and going back to our app component, we can notice that the book one information are no more rendered. To render it back, all we need is to add our book card as an HTML tag, starting with an uppercase. And as you can notice here at the top of our file, our book card component was also auto-imported. Instead of accessing here our book data from the book card, let's use props to pass those data directly from the app component. Thus, we can make our book card dynamically reusable. We're gonna start by adding props with type any to our book card component function. Within our app component, we're gonna put back the book one object. We're gonna add a new attribute book to our book card item, and we're gonna set its value to book one object. This value should be put between an open and a closing bracket. Now in our book card component, we can simply use props.book to access the tree field of our object, the title, the author, and the summary. And that way, we can use our book card component again so we can render the information of our book too as well. To make our code much clearer and readable, we are going to distract our book props. To do so, we will remove the attribute book and we're gonna prefix our seated value with three dots. Then we need to change the signature of our book card component as follows. This way, we'll be able to access our book fields directly without having the prefix props.book. So let's clear our HTML code and remove this prefix from the tree placeholder here. Now, let's go one step further by creating a list of books. So instead of having to declare multiple book objects, we will just push their data into this new list. Let's remove the book1 and book2 object that we are not using no more, and let's fix our component HTML code. So we're gonna use dynamic plus holders to access our book list. For each book within the list, a book card component is created, getting the book data as props. Let's now get rid of the book card tags that were using the deleted book object. 
As you can see on the browser, React is rendering our two books data using this book card component. So since React app architecture is based on components and those are meant to be reusable, I'm going to introduce you here to MUI, a React library with a multitude of fully customizable ready-to-use components. MUI is easy to implement. All we need is one command that will copy pass and then execute on our terminal. Once installed, we can go check our package.json file that is holding more dependencies than before now. Dependencies that will need to use this MUI library. So now let's get some code from MUI. For that, let's look for card on the search bar. We will use the MUI component with the purpose of giving our book card component a better look. We got a page with some documentation and a ready to implement example list. So we're gonna look for the lizard one with the image here. And as you can see, we are having the source code that we are simply going to copy past into our book card component. So first let's comment all the code we had before and pass just after it our MUI card code we copied. We got read all of our files. So to fix that, we're gonna start by wrapping our code with an empty tag and then we will need to import every MUI component so we can reuse it. Our two cards are rendered as expected, except the lizard image, which is normal for now. So let's start by cleaning a little bit. I'm removing the buttons that we'll not be using. I'm keeping only one typography and I'm getting rid of all the props passed to those components. All the props except the SX that I'm going to keep into the card tag. Within the SX, I'm going to add some padding and margin with a value set to 2 for both. As you might guess, M is used for margin and P for padding. So to add CSS style to our cards, we have the choice between using this MUI props called SX or we can as well use the React style prop. Both will do the job. So here I'm using style to set the background color of our card. I will also update the max width to 300. And now I'm going to remove the hard-coded lizard text so we can use dynamic placeholders to render our book title instead. Then I'm going to add two more typography tags so we can render the author and the summary as well. Let's remove then the commented section that we're not using no more. Let's get back to the MY website and search for typography. This company accepts different props. We will be using the variant with different values. Thus, our rendered card text is more stylish. So I'm going to set the title variant to h5, the author to subtitle one, and the summary to body two. In order to enhance our code, we're gonna proceed to some refactoring. We're gonna extract the style properties into a new constant. We can do this operation for the MOI SX prop as well as for the React style prop. We're gonna modify our summary typography by adding the color prop and setting its value to text secondary. This will just change the text color to gray. I need we need more data for every book we're under. So we're gonna go to our book interface and we're gonna add more info. A rating of type number, a start date of type date, a progress with a type of number, and finally an image field with type string that will be holding the image path. As you can see, React is now struggling to render our app. It reports error within the list of books that we set before in the app component. So to fix things, nothing complicated. All we need here is to add our new book fields, rating, start date, progress, and also the image path. We're gonna edit our second book as well so we can fix it adding the same fields. To render those new fields, we'll be using MUI components. Let's start with the rating back to the MUI search bar, looking for a rating component. Again, it's simple. Just, just copy the source code and add it into our book card code. We will just put it inside the card action tag. Here, the rating value is set to two. So as a result, we are having a two stars rating for both books. Next, we'll do the same operation for the start date field. Let's look for a chip component this time and copy past its code within the new card action tag. Don't forget that for every component copied past it from the MY website, we need to import it as marked on the first line of this file. We're going to edit the signature of our book card component by adding new props, the rating and the start date. 
Same as for typography, we're gonna use dynamic placeholders for writing on start date with the newly passed props. For start date, we need to use the function to local date string so we can convert the object into a readable string. I will also add the SX property for some style, setting the margin left of our chip component to two. So now we are still missing the reading progress of our books and the image. Let's look for a progress bar component in the MOI website. Again, easy peasy with a copy paste, a new card action, and our progress bar is now added to our card. I also add the props progress and the URL to the book card signature so we can dynamically display those information on the screen. Now let's just add the text before the slider to indicate that it's about our reading progress. And same as before, let's just add some margin left using the MOI SX prop. Within our card media here, we're gonna need those three props. Component with AMG as a value, hey equals to 140, and image with AMG that we are gained from the app component true props. Next step is to add some images to our project. Inside the source folder, we'll add a new directory, let's call it assets. Then I'm gonna add two images, le petit prince.png and l'étranger.png. Going back to app component, let's now provide our two books with the exact image path. To do so, we'll be using the function require. And as you see, the images are now displayed as a part of our book cards. As you might notice, our images need more height. So we're gonna set the props height inside our card media to 450px. As a final touch, we're gonna add some style to our main app component, setting display to flex and flex flow to row wrap. You can add as many books as you want into the book list. Everything's gonna be rendered dynamically. And here it is our bookshelf app working like a charm. And so my friends, we come to the end of today's video. I hope that your bookshelf application is working as mine and if you have any question just let me know in the comment section, I will be happy to help. Until the next video, I tell you au revoir.